But right across our site, Farringdon to be precise, and the last tunnel boring machine, Elizabeth, has turned its last turn, and we're going down to the depths to have a look. Tunnelling started on Crossrail in 2012 and has taken three years to dig 42 kilometres of new tunnels under London. There are eight TBMs, tunnel boring machines in total, and while some are left buried down here, one of them, Elizabeth, that we got to see today, is being dismantled and removed from beneath the ground. Currently standing in the westbound running tunnel, um, behind this wall, about to go inside, is the TBM that's dug its way through to this point. If what you're looking at now, the centre of that circle, you can see the, the inner circle that's slightly set back from the on the um, bulkhead there. That's the main bearing, so that's one of the, for the principal pieces of the TBM. It gives you that turning force to turn the cutter head. That's now been stripped out and it's sat on its own bogey, its own trolley. And it's about to be start being shifted back towards Stepney Green. This is tunneling machine Elizabeth, which is being dismantled, not left down here, and it gave me the perfect opportunity to ask the question I've always wanted to know. How do you steer one of these things? Well, it's propelled by rams going around the outside, about 25 rams pushing about 100 tonne each. You've got one driver sitting in a cabin with a huge control panel. He'll push the rams forward, turning the cutter head. That'll mock the ground. The ground will go out the back and it'll literally inch forward millimetre by millimetre at an, a, an average speed of about 20 millimetres every minute. And then to steer a TBM, the TBM, if you imagine, is split into three sections. You've got the front section, the middle section and the rear section. In between all of these sections, you've got little rams called articulation rams. And he can literally turn and bend the TBM shields to whichever, look to whichever direction he wants and mine that direction. Crossrail will use existing stations outside of London, plus 10 new ones that are being specifically built for it. Some have been dug deep down, whilst others at cut and cover level, not too dissimilar to how the first underground railways were built. We have mine stations in the central area, but either end, in the west and east, we have uh, cut and cover stations. So Paddington is built using cut and cover, so you basically drive some piles into the ground, you make a big box, and then you dig out that box, and then you make some cast and floor slabs at the base of it. And uh, Canary Wharf is the same, although Canary Wharf contractors built that for us. They built it in a dock, so they built it in a sort of wet environment. And then uh, Woolwich is also built as, a, as an open cut box. So those are the three. We have a surface station at Custom House, and then the rest are like this one here at Farringdon, which are mine stations. Basically, we drill a hole through the ground, and then we enlarge it to create the very big station tunnels you can see behind me. So we're back out into the bright sunlight outside and it is just incredible being down there and seeing it. For me, there's always a sense that people on the street, on the surface here, have no idea the scale of the operation that's going down below. And there's going to be this point, I think, in 2018 when the first bit opens, when people suddenly realise that Crossrail is here and just what an amazing thing it's going to be.